Hello, in this video we're looking at trig on Khan Academy, specifically graphs of trig functions. And as we scroll down and look here, we have graphing sinusoidal functions, and here we're looking at constructing them. So let's, let's say that we'll look at two of these types of problems. And um, what I will do is I'll pull up two of the problems I just solved. I think they're interesting cases. All right. And I'm also, um, I don't know if we need graph paper on this one. I'll show you how to sketch it out really quickly. OK. So they tell us that the graph of a sinusoidal function that could be sine or cosine has a max at 0, 10. OK. So I'm just going to plot for myself. All you really need is a rough sketch to get this going. You have a max at 0, 10. OK. That's up here. All right. And then what else are we told? We're told that we intersect its midline at pi over 4, 4. All right. So let's say about a height of 4 is about here. OK. That's our midline. And we intersect it at pi over 4, 4. So I'm just going to mark that here. So that means on the x-axis, this would be pi over 4. OK. On the y-axis, this I'm saying this is a height of 10. This is the equation y equals 4. It's a height of 4. And this point right here, label in purple, this point right here is pi over 4, 4. All right, so what do we know? We know that our amplitude is the distance between this maximum point and this line right here. So my amplitude is 6, right? 10 minus 4 is 6. My midline is at 4. And we actually know our period. Our period is going to be 4 times this value right here. The sine, func this sine or cosine function is keep go going to keep going. And let's say it comes back up here. Right, this little chunk is one fourth. It's always one fourth. This is now one half. If we re if we reach a maximum to a minimum, back up to the this point on the midline is three fourths, and then a full f four fourths of our period. So they're dividing this. Uh, they're giving us a glimpse of the period. They're giving us a glimpse of one fourth of it. So our period is just this is pi over four, right from zero to pi over four. This distance right here, times four is our period. So our period is pi over 4 times 4, which is pi. All right. I don't think there's any phase shifting here because I, as I sketch this out, I see a nice opportunity to write it as a cosine function. So I'm going to say it's our amplitude is 6. And I, it's, not, it's not been reflected. It's not starting at a minimum and then going up. It's just as your parent cosine function would behave. 6 times the cosine of, well, the value that the coefficient of x is equal to 2 pi divided by the period. And we'll call that value b, this next number. So I'm going to say b equals 2 pi over the period. And that means, in our case, if I swap the, the b value and p, and usually it's the absolute value of b, it's going to be the period equals 2 pi divided by b. And since we know the period is, um, actually, I don't need to rearrange that at all. I apologize. I wrote it the way I need it. B is equal to 2 pi divided by the period. And also, it is true, period is 2 pi divided by B. But this is more useful to us here. We have 2 pi divided by pi. And I should put, you should say that it, it could be positive or negative, the B value. So I'm going to put the absolute value sign there. And 2 pi divided by pi is just 2. And I'm going to write it as positive 2. And we'll play around that in decimal so you can see what happens if I make that positive or negative. And the midline is 4. Now, I would encourage you to check this in Desmos. Let me show you how to do that. Um, in Desmos, right, I've got another function there. Cancel that out. I think that this is a cosine function. So I'm going to type f of x. And that's, that's helpful to me. To, not as y equals, but f of x cosine of parentheses 2x plus 4. And I can look at the graph. I can zoom in. I could press this wrench over here and make the steps on the x-axis pi. 
and then I can see by scrolling around, or I could just, uh, this is why I type f of x, I can type in f of zero, and I can type in f of, f of pi divided by four. And I'm getting the points I need, right? I was told that when the input is zero, the output's 10. And when the input's pi over four, the output's four. And I can see that here in the graph, right? But I like typing it in right here so I can see it right away. And um, then I'm done with that, that problem. So I hope that was helpful. Let's look at one more example. This one's a little bit harder because uh, it involves phase shifting. So, or at least I should say the way I wrote it involves phase shift. Maybe you wrote it a different way. Um, here though, I'm gonna start with the same process. I'm gonna sketch it out. I, I'm gonna always sketch out my Y axis and my X axis. And I've got a midline. It tells me the function intersect is the midline at zero two. Okay, so that means that just like before, uh, we have a midline I'm defining y equals two at this location, and the point there's a point on the graph here. This is one of our points, zero two, and it has a minimum at three negative six. So I'm just going to count over one, two, three, and if that's two, I'd say negative six is about here, right? Two, four, and about there. So we've got this point, and I believe it said it's a minimum. Let me verify that. A minimum point, okay, so we've got we've got this function and it's intersecting the midline here, it's intersecting it's between a bottom there, okay. That means it's gonna skyrocket, skyrocket climb, I would just say to this point here. Let's find that point quickly, it's a maximum. The point that crosses the midline is exactly halfway between a minimum and maximum, which is a really wonderful feature of these graphs. So I just count three backwards to negative three, right? This is positive three. And the amplitude has to be the same, the amplitude represents the same distance from the midline to the bottom point, the minimum point, which is two minus negative six, absolute value of two minus negative six, which is just eight. So instead of going down eight, we just go up eight to this point here, and that will be at 10. Right, the midline is at two, two plus eight is 10. So the amplitude has to be the same here and here. So now we've got a third point, negative three, 10. All right, so what do we know? We know our amplitude, so we know our A value. And actually, let me just write this down. I My general template is that uh, function Y equals A, the absolute value of A is the amplitude, times the sine or cosine, depending on what you're using, um, parentheses b x plus, and I expect like this, parentheses plus c plus d. So a, the absolute value of a is our amplitude. So we've got that. We've got our amplitude is 8. Is it sine or cosine, this function here? You could write it as either, but I, I feel like I want to write this, let me see if I can just copy this quickly and show you. Copy this, okay. See, if this function was like right here, and then I can I continued it, I kept it going, what you basically have is a nice cosine function, right? So I like that little phase shift of three right there um, to see the parent function kind of vertically stretched. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Um, but that's, so that's the way I'm gonna write it. You could write it as sine, um, but that might change a few things. But you can do it using sine. It's not that you can't do it that way. I'm gonna to choose to do it as cosine. All right, so, so now, I'm just to remind myself of what I'm actually doing, I'm gonna rewrite this. It doesn't really change my template. I'm just gonna say cosine. All right, now I wanna, the B value, b is equal to 2 pi over our period. And what is our period here? Well, from 0 to 3, this horizontal distance right here, that again is 1 fourth of our total period. So the b value is going to be 2 pi divided by 12. And that reduces 2 divided by 12 is, pi over, is 1 6, so it's pi over 6. OK, pi over 6. All right, now. C is the phase shift value. So our phase shift, I'm saying our phase shift, 
and that's what I was trying to show before, is the parent function pushed back three units, right? So it's, so C is three, because I can see that um, the cosine intersects the y axis as a parent function. Here it's not, it's back a little bit. That maximum point is back three units. So C is three as a distance. So I'm gonna write parentheses x, and then I'm gonna um, add three. Remember when you add, uh, to your phase shift, add a positive value, it's gonna move left. And that's true for all functions. When you add to the input, uh, you're gonna horizontally shift your function left three units. And then our midline is two. Okay, now this is correct, but you might also like to write it, let me write it up here, like this. F of x equals eight cosine of pi over six x. And then you're gonna distribute this to both and a nice thing about that is what you're always going to get as in this term is the phase shift, in this case three, times the b value pi over six. And it's just pi over two. Three pi over six reduces to pi over two. And then you have a midline of plus two. So a little bit less parentheses here. And when you check this in Desmos, and I really encourage you to do that, again, try the f of x notation. You can quickly type this in now to see if you've got it. 8 cosine of pi over 6 x plus pi over 2 and then plus 2 and we are given some test points right f of 0 0 equals 2 that means the input of 0 gives us an output of 2 it's this point right here and we want to plug in 3 we should get negative 6 and we do um, that's this point here. And you can see the other point, negative 310, so we've got it. Now, if you change the B value to negative, you get a reflection, right? And so that's one way to reflect your graph. And let me just copy and paste that. Although, I'm, I've never really, I don't really see the need to put the negative there versus Usually what you would see, I suppose. I guess you could see a negative in there. I'm trying to think of a good context for that. No, I don't want to leave this page. Um, so we have a third function here. Instead of putting the negative sign there, I'll put it on the outside. And you can see it matches. So the if B is positive or negative, that could represent a reflection over the x-axis. But the negative sign is represented in two places here. So it's, I think it's a matter of factoring out that negative one. Um, unless I'm missing something. So that's, that's, uh, wait, what am I missing? I'm trying to think, so, sorry, I'm having a moment. Please let me know if you can think of the connection here. I'm, I'm blanking out on the nice steps. It's not a factoring out of negative one. I should not have said that, but there's something connecting these two. I'm having a hard time thinking of a nice way of representing that, but there is one and I'm gonna think about it. All right, thank you.